Hi everyone, today I'm here with Bradley Price, professional boxer, two-time British title challenger, uh, Welsh champion, Commonwealth champion, WBC silver challenger, uh, and a lot more over a very extensive professional career, 63 fight career. So thank you for taking the time to uh, have a chat with me today, Bradley. No problem. Um, had a lot of fights, a lot of high level fights, a lot of um, very tough fight, tough fights although you made some of them look easier than others. But, uh, I mean, what were the highlights of your career? I mean, what were, like, your proudest moments, your favourite moments, uh, and, and everything like that? I'd have to say, um, even though I've not watched a lot of my fights back as when I was boxing, but now I've obviously retired, I've managed to get all of, a lot of my fights. So watching some of them back is just um, takes me back, back to the good times. And I'd have to say the Aussie Duvan fight. Probably he was coming off the back of 12 wins against um, British boxers, and I was the 13th boxer to fight him. And um, yeah, to get a win over him, he he beat Jamie Moore. I think he, I think he might have knocked Jamie Moore out or stopped him something or another. So he, he was a t a tough tough old boxer. So um, I, I'm thinking watching our fight back. I think you no know, matter stick with game plan, I can get involved with him. I had to stay on the outside and yeah, and, and um, yeah, that has to be up there as one of my best wins, winning that Commonwealth title. In New and it was in Newport as well, which was a bonus. So but yeah, it was just a great occasion. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you touched on something else there, um, you know, with that. And obviously you mentioned fighting the Newport hometown crowd um, and everything like that. And uh, I mean, you fought all over the place. I mean, you know, Bulgaria and Poland and obviously all over the UK. Um, I think uh, Denmark you fought in as well, Ireland, yeah. you know. So, I mean, out of, all, out of all those places, obviously you've gone into all different types of types of territories, seen all different types of crowds and stuff. I mean, what was sort of the best reception um, or like the best crowd, you know, the best atmosphere, the best reception you've had from the crowd? Well, I'd have, say, I'd have to say Newport. Newport was always, obviously, I'm a Newport boy, so... Um, Fighting in Newport was always always a big occasion for me, and um, obviously when I started travelling, that was towards the end of my career, and I mean I wasn't taking it as serious as, as I should have, and so I mean they were they were just all days. I mean they were just trips abroad. They were just trips abroad to have a fight and get paid. But that was that was it. But um, yes, I I always like boxing in Newport. Um, I'm not sure how many times in boxing, or maybe six, seven times, I guess. But um, yeah, it was always a good occasion boxing in front of the home crowd. And yeah, I enjoyed every occasion. And I mean, obviously, you know, given the, the length of your career and like the number of fights um, that you had and, and everything like that, I mean, how do you sort of remain so dedicated um, for such a long time? I mean, and what I mean by that is obviously you've had like that, you know, the highs and lows, haven't you? I mean, you've won titles. You've yeah. Been big contenders, but, you know, you've also been, you know, lost fights for journeyman. I mean, you, you sort of done it all over the, in, to a certain extent. And how did you sort of remain so dedicated over, like, such a long, like, such a long career, basically? Well, I think um, a lot of the losses was down to lack of dedication. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I mean, I, that's the thing with me. I'm, I'm a tough, I'm tough, I'm game. I'm up for a fight with a drop of an act. And, um, I mean, I would take fights on a couple of days' notice, um, whether I was fit or not. And, yeah, when I got to a certain stage of my career, I mean, I guess, I mean, I guess that's where my downfall was when I started picking up defeats. And when I, I mean, I was just a yes man. I, I would accept any fight. Uh, I took the Chris Eubank fight at um, three days' notice. And, I mean, at, at that stage of my career, it was just acting to take fights. And I mean, I love fighting. If I could continue now, I'd still be taking fights despite my record getting worse. But um, it's something I loved and something I didn't want to stop doing. Okay. And I mean, that, that's, that is an interesting point because um, obviously 
there was a lot of talk towards the end of your career of, of eye problems and things like that. So even though I'm skipping to the end now, and I, I reckon because you've done so much, I reckon we're going to skip around in time a bit here. Yeah. Um, you know, but I mean, that's cool. But I mean, there was this thing about the eyes and stuff. And, and I, I remember being, uh, you know, one of the ringside photographers at like your very last fight against Kieran Gethin. And there was people were saying like you couldn't see and or you couldn't see out of one eye and, and all this and you were just carrying on anyway. I mean, what what's the score with that, Bradley? I mean, is that true? Or I mean, what what happened there? Yeah, well, um, I think the time I can pinpoint my eye pro problem was after the Billy Joe Saunders fight because mm. the next fight after that was the Chris Eubank fight where me and Gary Locker had parted parted ways. He believed I should have retired. Um, you know, me, something I was never gonna do, and despite, yeah, I, I had, I got squint in my eye. I think this is where my one eye pretty much turns out of the way, and it kind of, it's okay if I'm sat still like this, is is all fine. But when I'm running and stuff like, like I stopped my football career pretty much same same time. You know, I mean, I played for Kumkan for well for probably ten years, and I had to knock down the head because. I couldn't see where the ball was going to be honest. Like it, it was just, it was just a nightmare. When, when, so when someone was in front of me, it was, it was hard. It was like, it was like I was drunk as they was moving in front of me because it just disorientated me. And um, yeah, I didn't know what the problem was. I never found out. I just carried on boxing. I was, I was passing my eye test, um, and I, I never really wanted to look into what the damage was. I just wanted the you know I me, mean? I was stuck in the boxing mindset and just as long as I pass the medal, as long as I keep fighting, I kept going. And um, yeah, like I said, it is, it is a squint with my left eye turns out. And yeah, it, it, it's not, it's not um, the best thing to have when you're boxing, when you've got someone in front of you. Because it, it's definitely, it doesn't feel right when you're in there, when you're in there with someone in front of you moving. It's, yeah, it's, it's not a good thing, Dad, but like I said, I just didn't want to quit. I just wanted to keep fighting and fighting and fighting. And I would still be going out if it was allowed, but... I mean, obviously yeah. you've got this, you know, this strong mindset and this sort of warrior's mindset. Like you say, you take any fight at any time and all this this type of thing. But I mean, and I know you, you touched on the dedication being like that, and maybe that's how it was. It doesn't always look that way when you're watching. But what was your motivation? I mean, I know you love fighting, but I mean, what what sort of keeps the fire burning? And I, you, like you say, you still want to fight now. So I mean, yeah. where do you think where do you think it comes from? Like that sort of that that fire to to just get in there and have a fight. I don't know because I, I I don't like fighting. To be honest, I've, um, no, I, I is. Never really had a street fight. I, I, I hate fighting. I'm, I'm not one to get into arguments or stuff like that. Like, but like early in my career, it, it'd probably take me like maybe three, four rounds again to the fight because I'd have to get hit before. I mean, I, I couldn't just go out and attack someone. I'd have to. I was always at my best after I, I got smashed in the face or something. So <laughs> that's just the type of person I was. I'd have to get hit before I hit them. And, and earlier on, you touched on like um, you touched on the Chris Eubank uh, fight. You touched on the Billy Joe Sanders. Uh, I mean, obviously, you know, I mean, you've had you've had so many fights. There's so much to talk about there. But as soon as you you touched on those, you know, two two very big ones. Um, took the one on three days notice. I mean, tell us a little like a little bit about that, about how the fight went and what the preparations were like, and just uh, anything at all. Well, with the obviously, I trained with Gary Lockett. Like, I train quite hard, you know what I mean? He's a good trainer. So we train quite well for the Billy Joe Fort Saunas fight, as, as hard as we could, I suppose. Um, I guess, but before going back, before the Billy Joe Saunas fight, I, I'd come off a win against Danny Butler in Newport. I then took a fight on the Ricky Attenbill against um, Patrick Mendy, who was pretty much super middleweight. And I guess I wasn't supposed to win that. But um, I, I pulled off a great performance. I beat him on points. And the next thing was, well, I planned on a fight then for at the, um, maybe light middle. But the Patrick Manny fight came up. Nothing else was being offered. So we took that. And then obviously uh, the Billy Joe Swanners fight came up. 
and that's all it was on offer. But it was a Commonwealth title. It was a def- decent shot. Uh, out of my weight class, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't a middleweight, but we took the fight. And, yeah, he, it's, I didn't rate him for power, to be fair. But I thought he's, he's probably the best boxer, skill-wise, I had been in with. He, he was so quick. I mean, he hit you from all angles. He hit you so fast. And he kind of busted my head early in the fight. But um, power-wise, I didn't think he had any power. That's, that's an interesting insight. I mean, it's, it's always good. Like, it's one thing to watch the fights, but, I mean, you know, to, to hear, like, your point yeah. of view from it is, is something... And I mean, um, what about, let's think of another big one. What about your fight with, with Frankie Gavin, for example? Um, I mean, that's obviously, you know, he, he went on to achieve quite a bit. Some people say, you know, he could have achieved more and everything. But I mean, what about your fight with him? Uh, I know I'm skipping on a little bit there, but I mean, how, yeah. did, how, did, how did that go? Um, well, that was another sh- short note, this one. They literally, um, I think they phoned us like a couple of days. And then I was, I had like a stone to lose, and then I couldn't make, I couldn't lose the full amount of weight. So they, they, I think they tried again for a British title, but then they, they, um, I couldn't make the weight, and then they changed it to something else. And we, just, I, I'm not sure how many rounds it was, but I think it was a ten rounder. But um, yeah, at that stage of the career, it wasn't a. I, I wasn't in it to win it. You know I mean, it was just mm. turn up, have a fight, get paid. Mm. Oh, yeah, but, uh, okay. makes sense. Um, okay, so I mean, obviously, obviously, the mentality at a point in time changed, which is cool. But I mean, earlier in your career, like when when you were, you know, based on what you're saying, like more in the zone for for winning and things like that. Yeah. What was your What was your mentality like then? I mean, going going back into into the earlier stages. I mean, did you ever get nervous before fights? Like, I mean, how? I mean, what was your mental um, preparation like at, at that stage, like even around the time winning, you know, winning the Commonwealth, big fights like that, going into them. I mean, what what was your thinking like, basically? Yeah, well, obviously we was at the obviously at the Carl Zaggy camp, and I mean Enzo, I mean he just he pushed as hard as he could, and I mean it was brutal, and training was always brutal. Um, yeah, it was, it was always a tough camp with Enzo, and he always got us in the best best condition he could and um, yeah I, I I was like I said I, I'm not one for fighting but I was always I was always petrified all the time for any fight I you know what I mean I would be really I was always scared for every fight and it would have to take, take take someone to hit me in the fight to just to wake me up I mean I think we I always had that problem at the um, at Newbridge and Enzo, I mean, it'll take him a couple of slaps just to just to get me into the fight, to be honest. But yeah, so it was good experience training with Enzo. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a good insight that is. And the, and the other thing, Bradley, I mean, uh, you know, going going back in time a bit a bit now, like things like that. But you say like mm-hmm. you were sort of one for fighting. You weren't you know fighting on the street and things like that. And obviously, there's certain stereotypes. You know, a lot of boxers you know in trouble when they're young and all that type of thing before they start fighting. But it wasn't like that for you. So I mean, what was your amateur career like, and and as well as that, I mean, how did you actually like get into boxing in the first place? I mean, I, I suppose we start there. I mean, how did you get into the sport? Where did it start for you? Well, the start of it was I, I think I was about nine, and my father took my two older brothers to obviously the Newbridge Boxing Gym, and I wanted to go to karate. You know, I mean, I was just a young kid who loved kicking and running about and stuff like that. So I was going to karate, and my two, bro- my two brothers was going to boxing with my dad. And I mean, he wasn't showing me no attention. When, he, when he'd pick us up on the weekends, it was never, Brad, I was karate going, I was just going. It was, it was always, boys, I was a boxing going, I was boxing going. So, I mean, I kind of, I guess, I done it for his attention, I guess. So I joined up boxing. and. Just stuck at it since, I guess. Yeah, but it's, it's not something I wanted to do. I, I didn't plan on getting into it, but um, yeah, I, I I joined eventually and just turned out I had a couple of fights. I, it just seemed I, I, I was pretty good at it. 
And then, like, I mean, with with your amateur career and, and things like that, I mean, um, what was that like? I mean, how did that how did that go for you when you were first getting into the sport as like as an amateur and everything? Yeah, well, I I, I think I probably won about seventy, maybe seventy fights, and I no, mean, I only lost like about six, seven fights as an amateur. I mean, I was um, I won the British schoolboy title. I won every Welsh title I entered, and um, yeah, I think the newest gym at the time, I don't think there was a a better gym around than Newbridge Boxers. We used to turn up at shows we had myself, my two brothers, Byron and Delroy, Gan Reese, and we always see um, none of us was losing. We just turn up, <laughs> we was winning after win after win. And yeah, we I think we was probably the best amateur gym around at the time. And then when your professional career come along and, and when it first started and things like that, I mean, what were your sort of what were your sort of ambitions by that time? So even maybe not as early as your debut, but even then, like around those those first few fights that you had, those first early early fights. Because I know on, on your debut, you, I mean, it wasn't in Wales. You travelled. What was your mindset when you were first like starting out? Well, um, obviously, my two brothers were very pro. I was doing well in the amateurs, so I don't know what was going to happen with my amateur career, whether I might have been pushed towards the Olympics one day or something. Um, but like I said, at the time, I, I just left school. Uh, left school, I, I was working in a factory somewhere. And for my two brothers, I mean, they boxing pro. I see them bring on money and stuff like that, and I thought, well, I want that. So it was just a case of the less turn progress, let's go and earn some money. So, yeah, so that was my reason for turning pro, pretty much just for the money, um, for the lifestyle. I mean, I grew up, we, we had Joe Carzaghi in the gym, and it's just something I wanted. And all of us in the gym at the time, none of us would have imagined us having a, ending our careers with, with uh, as many losses as I have. But... Um, like Gavin and myself and stuff like that, we never thought we'd lose as a professional, but I mean, it, it turned out as it did and that, that's it. You know, being surrounded like like in a new bridge gym by that much talent, um, I mean, obviously everyone knows, I, I know at all different times, but you know, there's so much talent coming through that, that gym. I mean, what was it like being like, being surrounded, I mean, you know, the atmosphere in the gym, the, like the camaraderie, was it like competitive or was it more sort of camaraderie? Because I mean, being in, in all different gyms myself, I've seen some where it's, it's quite competitive between the lads and others, yeah. where it's quite like it's just more sort of banter and it's more like easy going and they're working together. I mean, you know, at the Newbridge gym, what was uh, the whole atmosphere, the whole environment like when you were training there? I, I guess we all wanted to prove ourselves. I mean, me and, I think me and Gavin had some of the best bar in... <laughs> You'd see in the in the boxing ring, and we used to not get along with each other. But um, yeah, span was always always good. Um, yeah, I think we were just different level. You know what I mean, and uh, as we were in them days, I mean, I thought it was just going to continue and continue and continue. Um, but obviously, seeing Joe as well go on to what he achieved and just training alongside him, I mean, it's, you just you know, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, the other, the other thing um, that we sort of touched on a little bit earlier, but I mean, it, it bears asking, I think, is in your career, you had up and downs, and obviously, as you say, you lost fights and things like that. But obviously, you kept coming back, and I, and I know and I know you love fighting, and I know the, like the sort of the paydays were, were good, and there was different things like that. But I mean, there's some fighters out there that obviously, you know, they lose a couple of times, or, or they don't do as well a couple of times, and, and they don't, do you know what I mean? They don't bounce back, they don't score. Yeah. Keep going. Whereas obviously you kept going through you know, thick and thin, like through you know high, the highs and lows of it. And I mean, how do you actually how do you actually do something like that? I mean, if you had to say to like young young boxers now, um, you know, maybe they lost a fight or something. How did yeah. you sort of bounce back from from failure, basically, when it did happen? I guess for myself, I I guess my only one of my main negatives was I was never hundred percent dedicated to the sport. And I know it was a lot in the papers and stuff, but my party lifestyle and stuff like that. But so, I mean, I trained for a fight. I dedicate myself solidly to a training for a fight. I'd have that fight and then 
my time off and was partying. You know what I mean? So I, I train, party, and then get back into training again. And I managed to do, get, get, do that for most of my early days as a pro. But obviously towards the end, I mean, just, it just didn't, didn't work for me. Mm. I catch it up with you, yeah. But I mean, you, you know, Bradley, with that, you, you, you've touched on a few things a few times about dedication and things. I mean, from your point of view, um, do you have any regrets about that? I mean, would you change anything if you, if you went back? Um, like, or, or are you sort of happy with, with what you've achieved? I know that's sort of a tougher question. Yeah. But you, you've, touched, you've touched on a dedication. I mean, everything you've achieved... Um, personally, I mean, a little bit off topic, but personally, I think you should be, you know, you should be very happy because you achieved some some amazing things. But I mean, from your point of view, like, how do you feel about it? Um, just because you've touched on the dedication a few times, and well, I'd probably, I might say that um, I change this, I change that, and change this. But in my head, I've always been, it is what it is. I mean, what's happened for my career, I'm happy with it. I mean, I. If I didn't dedicate myself, so be it. That's life. And yeah, I'm happy with, with it, how everything's gone. I'm happy with how it turned out. You know I mean, it was, it, was, it was my story, and, and, you know I, mean? and I wrote it. Mm. I like that. I like that. I mean, because that's the thing, isn't it? I mean, even when um, I'm at fights now, and like anywhere, even if it's in Wales, if it's in other parts of England or whatever, I mean, people still talk about you like all the time, do you know what I mean? And, and yeah. oh, you know, remember Bradley Price, remember this fight, that fight and stuff like that. So, I mean, that sort of leads me, and that's just something even personally that I've heard, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got that legendary, oh, remember Bradley Price. But I mean, how, how do you think that you, like your career will sort of be remembered um, so far, but also like in years, like in years to come, basically? What do you think of that? Well, yeah, I, li- I like to be remembered. Um, I was in some of the, some of the best fights in the UK, you know what I mean? Yeah. There's a lot of good fights, a lot of tough fights. Um, but, yeah, I just, if I had to give advice to anyone, i just say keep dedicating yourself. Keep dedicate. It's something I want to give back to the sport, you know what I mean? Like, at the minute, I'm a, I'm a bit busy doing other things, but um, opening the gym again is definitely something I, I'd want to do in the future. Just the... Um, like Gavin, I mean, Gavin's gone from boxing to coaching, which is the perfect thing to do. But um, yeah, so hopefully in, in time to come, I'll do the same as him and, and open my own gym and pass on a bit of my knowledge. Yeah, well, that's, I hope so. I mean, because funnily enough, that was, um, that was another question I had. I was going to ask, but you've answered it a- anyway. But yeah, I mean, your future ambitions, training and, and sort of helping the youth uh, and giving yeah. back. Yeah, uh, that's that's a good cause. I mean, because you know you've got so much knowledge, like to pass on. Yeah, uh, I think I think that would be absolutely fantastic. Um, and to be honest, I mean, I think that's I think that's everything. I mean, I think that's yeah. like a really good overview um, of like the you know ins and outs of your career and yeah. um, and how you know how you how you achieved so much, which was exactly what I was aiming for. So uh, yeah. Happy day.